morning. Welcome to the worship today. Today's a special day. One of uh, four very special celebrations to uh, honor the uh, 200th anniversary of uh, Trinity Church. We thank everyone who has uh, been participating. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the uh, decorated chairs uh, down the hallway. Uh, we will continue to uh, offer that. And if you have any questions about that, uh, Judy Monleone will uh, help you uh, find a chair and uh, also to participate in the program. It's our pleasure today uh, to welcome back uh, Reverend Dr. Jim Christensen and his wife, Marcia, uh, with us. And uh, he's here as a former pastor at Trinity uh, United Church of Christ. And uh, immediately after church, we have an education hour. Uh, and Jim has uh, graciously agreed to uh, come to the library to uh, share his thoughts and answer questions and uh, get to know people. Uh, so we would welcome anyone who would like to have a further conversation with Jim and get to know him a little better uh, in the library immediately after uh, our worship service this morning. We uh, actually today also are uh, gearing up for the Easter holidays and uh, it's great to be standing here in the first Sunday of spring anyway. Uh, let's hope that the weather continues, but the breakfast program is coming down the road, and uh, so uh, we have a uh, Easter breakfast, which we need workers uh, and donations, and the sign-up sheets are on the table out in the outer context if you're able to help us with either your work or your donation. We also uh, are gearing up for the Easter flowers, and uh, you'll find some uh, envelopes available for that in a couple of Sundays to order them, uh, because they always uh, add to our Easter Sunday worship. Um, uh, so today, uh, we also uh, are um, preparing for one great hour sharing offering uh, next Sunday, and Lynn Whitterwell is the chair of our mission committee, and uh, she has some things to share. And everybody wanted me to let you know that that sign is upside down. This sign? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody can see it. I am in the Whitwell. Yes? And I am representing your mission committee, and I'm here on behalf of your mission committee and social action committee. Next Sunday is a special time in our church where we will have the opportunity to share our monies, to help families and communities around the world whose lives have been broken into pieces. One great hour of sharing, offering, helps people build their houses again, and churches rebuild after floods, fires, and earthquakes. It helps people create new homes when they have had to leave their homes because it was unsafe. It helps communities have clean water, healthy food, and schools for children. This offering helps us to do more than we can ever imagine, to create a new picture for our neighbors. Now, let's get this right. <laughs> All this through the power of God. Can you imagine how God might use you in a new picture for those in need? I just wanted to close with these words. Kindness in words creates confidence. Kindness in thinking creates profoundness. Kindness in giving creates love. Give generously. You'll find these envelopes next Sunday at the great one great hour of sharing in your pews. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Suzanne? As this is the first Sunday in spring, I know that many of you have been doing your spring cleaning and might be finding coats and jackets and things that you don't want to have anymore. So what I would like us to do is when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, they not only put down palm leaves, but they also put down their cloaks, otherwise coats. 
And so this Palm Sunday, I would like to collect the coats and the jackets that you don't want to wear anymore or that you've outgrown because, yeah, I ate too much. Um, and those reasons. And we would like to collect them and then line the, the pew, the aisle, with the cloaks that we are, the coats that we are collecting. So Palm Sunday, I will be collecting coats to give away next winter to the people that need them. So thank you. Are there other announcements? Let's be together and spirit of prayer. Our choral call to worship today is new to us, um, but it's something that we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. So choir is going to introduce it to you one time. If you feel comfortable joining in singing the second time through, please join us. If you don't feel comfortable, just be in the spirit of listening and letting God's presence come over you. So, is the choral call to worship? The words are in your bulletin.
brothers and sisters in one family of humanity. As we continue with our service of worship, uh, Suzanne uh, wants to introduce a special music program. So during our faith formation time for the younger kids, Miss Gabby Wright has been here almost every single week. And during the music time, I've been working on a lot of different things. And one of the things we've been working on is learning to play handbells. And I know Mom that you can't stand this in music stand. Sorry. I'll have to take a picture next time. So she will be playing Amazing Grace as a solo handbell. Plant flowers outside of school, we see how fast they 
they grow. And I hope you guys do that this spring because it's a reminder of how great life is. So before you guys go, let's have a word of prayer. Almighty God, uh, we thank you for the gift of each child who's here today. You bless us in so many ways that goes beyond our knowing, beyond our understanding. We know that uh, just by our being, people find joy, and they're happy when they see us. And we know the many things that uh, each of us are able to do to make this world a better place. Be with us in a special way as we celebrate the gift of spring, as we pay attention to this wonderful world that you've created for us to live in, and as we celebrate the great gift of life together. Watch over each child here today as we pray as a community of faith. Help them to grow in stature and in love of you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up today, and uh, go look in the woods. <laughs>
morning. To say it's a pleasure to be back at Worcester among you dear friends is an understatement. It is truly a blessing to be here. I am deeply indebted to your pastor, Kevin, for the invitation. It is a gift of inestimable value to me. I, I, I cannot express strongly how much I appreciate the hospitality in your mind. And you folks, you by your love and your care have helped me become who I am. I carry the lessons that I learned here in Worcester with me. They are part of my very being. And the gifts that have been given through this church are taken with me wherever I go, whether it be in northern Maine or at our home in New Hampshire or in our ministries in Africa. Through you, I have been loved. Through me, your love is communicated. I thank you for that. In Ghana, an expression that we hear oftentimes is God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let's say that. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. All the time, God is good. And that's a very common greeting. You'll hear people do it on the street corner. One will say, God is good all the time, and immediately the response is, all the time, God is good. What a blessed message. God is good all the time. And during our 200th anniversary here at the church, we look back through the history and say, there and there and there and there and there, we can see the goodness of God shining through this people. That's our story. That's the good news. That's the gospel that we proclaim. Before I get into what I prepared for this morning, I do want to say that uh, I was envious of you when uh, your pastor said that uh, spring began a couple days ago. <laughs> and the signs of spring are all around. When March and I left home on Tuesday, we had three feet of snow on the flat in our backyard. <laughs> we heard from our friends up in northern Maine, who, where we have a summer house, that they have five feet of snow on the flat. And on Moosehead Lake, which is the largest lake in the United States since I'm sorry, the third largest state lake in the United States is totally contained within the borders of one state. There are at the present time, I think it's 24 inches of ice covering the entire thing. So we're expecting that we're going to see springtime sometime around May 20th. Winter will come on again by middle of November. Literally, we have not seen grass since before Thanksgiving until we came on this trip. So. I'm glad to hear the message of spring. <laughs> I hope you're right. We can use it. Well, this is the 200th anniversary of this church. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But anniversaries, birthdays. Our family has the tradition that one of the ways that we celebrate birthdays is to tell the story of the day that the blessing of new life came into our families. Every year, for every person in our families, we tell the story. Every year, our whole family hears the story again of the day of origin. Indeed, it's become such a tradition in our family that if there is a member of our family, one of the siblings or the birthday boy or girl himself or herself who's not able to be present for the birthday, they'll call up on the phone and say, we want to hear the story. Tell us the story. This past Friday, our second oldest grandson was 17. And the story was told. But the day that blessing arrived in the family, in two months from today, the story will be told again for our firstborn grandson. He is the one whose birth was announced in this church in the year 2000, as we began to worship on that Sunday morning, 
And on his birthday, not only will his parents tell the story of the difference that was made in their lives on a day that the brightness of Benjamin was born into the family, but Marsha, I'll tell the story about how he was introduced here in the church on that morning. That's part of the story. That's part of where he came from. The story is part of the fabric, the fabric of his life, which helps him to understand who he is and how his journey began. And also the trajectory his life is taking as it moves on in that great adventure of living. In our personal lives, we must understand the story of our origins. We must understand them if we're to truly understand the opportunities, the exigencies, and the challenges of the path that have led to today. In our personal lives, we must understand the story of our origins, if we're to understand the challenges, the, exit, uh, the, the, the opportunities, and the exigencies that led to the day and will lead us into that limitless future that stands in front of us. For personal lives do have trajectories, they move. They're transformed by what happened yesterday and we carry yesterday with us into tomorrow. If we are to understand that great Newtonian hymn, Amazing grace. If we are understand his grace has brought us safe thus far, we must know where thus far began. And if we're to understand his grace will lead us home, we must know the trajectory of life that will lead us in that direction. As it is in our personal lives, so so also it is in our corporate and our community life as well. I thoroughly enjoyed reading the work of Herb Broda that's been printed in the Trinity Topics over the course of the last year as he's told something of the history of this church, drawing on the work of Leo Kyle and also uh, the author of a uh, uh, history that was written towards the end of the 1800s and also some of his original research. Herb has helped us to paint a beautiful picture of the nascent days of this community of faith. Birthed on the edge of the frontier, incorporating diverse immigrant families with a variety of religious histories and affiliations, addressing the issue of bilingualism, Experiencing an expansion and a contraction and an expansion again. Herb has told the story of what it has meant to be a part of this congregation. Herb has written about the history, the 200 year history of this congregation. He's described it in such a way that we understand that the history of this congregation is one of fluid incorporation of the newly arrived spiritual diversity and ongoing accommodation to social and cultural change. Let me say that again. The first 200 years of this church's history tells the story of the fluid incorporation of the newly arrived spiritual diversity and the ongoing accommodation to social and cultural change. That's part of our story the history of this church. The history, if we're to be honest, though, also has not only great and glorious moments, but also there have been some struggles. There have been struggles of competing ideas of the direction God would have us walk. There have been the struggles occasioned by misplaced trust. There have been the struggles that have been occasioned by financial challenges. And there have been conflicting views of what it is that is moral and just in response to particular situations of contention. That's part of our history too. Like the Israelites in the desert, the history of this church is one of both great faithfulness and also fearful wandering. And it's appropriate that we embrace both for in the midst of both the great moments and the troubled moments. God has been active in the present and moving. His grace has brought us safe thus far. 
and grace will leave us. That's the story of this church. Like the Israelites in the desert, there are moments of greatness and there are also moments of fearful wandering. This is the story of this church. But more important for the message that I want to share with you today, this is also our personal story, for we are part of this community of faith that by sharing our story, develop an identity as people. The only thing that I have in common with this congregation, historically, it certainly is not from family tradition. My family was Scandinavian, and I think if I'm Remember correctly, most of you have German backgrounds. My history is in New England. Yours is here. But what we share is buying into the story of God's work through this place, and in that story, we are uniform, unified. We share a common history. And the history becomes our story. The history becomes our story. And we find unity in that story. We share the awareness that God has been active in this place. Surely it is the presence of the Lord that is found in this place. We have seen it. We have felt it. We have known it. We have experienced it. We have celebrated it. Together. And through that, the Spirit blends us and binds us together in this community of love that allows someone to be absent for 17 years and to return and discover the broad presence of love in this community. It's through the lens of the story that we begin to understand where we have been, where we are, and where we're going. For through the moments of history, we discover a commonality, and that is that God has been present, moving and directing us in the direction that God chooses for this community to grow. In his 1967 book, Marshall McLuhan wrote, the book is entitled, The, Me the Medium is the Massage. Marshall McLuhan said, we look at the future through a rear view mirror, we march backwards into the future. I love that. What he's saying is the fact that we know what will be on the basis of what has been. We anticipate on the basis of experience. In 2011, Tim Carmody in the Business Magazine expanded upon this, uh, this statement by uh, um, McLuhan when he said, our futures are always experienced and frequently determined by a past that few of us fully acknowledge or understand. Now part of the joy and part of the purpose of the celebration of this church's 200th anniversary is to acknowledge and to understand its past. Part of the joy and the purpose of our celebration during this 200th year of celebration is to acknowledge and understand our dependence upon those who have populated our past and to recognize the way in which God uses them even as God uses us to influence the present and the future. It is those who populate our past who through their lives lived in faith have linked the first entry, have inked the first entries into the history of this congregation. It is they, under the guidance of God, who set the direction, even as I would suggest, it is we, under the guidance of God, who are still moving toward the future God chooses for this congregation. So a very important part of our celebration is to remember and reflect, to know, to embrace, and to own our story. In that Hebrew scripture that Joan read to us, <coughs> Incidentally, Joan was the first person from Trinity Church who I ever spoke to when she called us on a Monday evening 
back in the year 1995. She was the chairman of the committee that invited me to come to this church. And to say I am indebted to her is an understatement. I am indebted to her. I am indebted to you. That's part of my story, which is also part of our story. In the scripture that Joan read, we find a reminder of the power of story and symbol as both the guardians and the conveyors of memory. You'll remember that there we read Joshua set up in Gilgal the twelve stones that they had taken out of the Jordan. And he said to the Israelites, listen to this, in the future when your descendants ask their parents or your children ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them. Tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us and we had crossed over. Tell the story. Know the story. Share the story. It is God's story active in this place. I want to step aside from that reading just to uh, digress for a moment. We read that last thing. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. I remind you that nobody who walked into the promised land had themselves walked across the dried up Red Sea. Nobody who exited Egypt lived to enter Canaan. But by owning the story, that story became their story. God dried up the, story, dried up the uh, Jordan before us, like God dried up the sea before us. You own the story, you share the story, and there's unity to be found. The Lord God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he tried it up before us, he told me to cross over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of God is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. He did it so the story and power of God would be known and told. The power of symbol, the power of story. <coughs> Back in 1981 in my church in South Burke, Maine, we received 32 Cambodian refugees and resettled them in the community. On the one first anniversary year of their arrival, all the Cambodian refugees and all the people in the church were invited to bring a stone to church. And in front of the church, we had this big pile of stones. And following the worship, those stones were taken out to the front lawn of the church. And over the course of the next year, we erected big stone pillars that held the sign identifying the church. And at the base of the pillars are those stones that were brought as memorials. At the base of the identity of the church as it presented to the community is the story of inclusion and embrace and welcome in God's power. Story, symbol, you have symbols. Look around yourself. The beautiful symbols. Here, here. The incredible ministries that you're involved in. Think of the symbol of the houses that are built in Tijuana. Outreach, embrace, love, <coughs> compassion. Think of the symbol that's served every weekday down in the basement. The church saying to the community, you are welcome. Come. Have your deepest hungers fed. This is a place of love and welcome. Don't forget your story. Don't forget our story. Because every person who has walked into this church and shared in the work and love of this church is a part of the story and will forever be part of the story. Celebrate. 200 years. And folks, God ain't done with you yet. Think of 
the change that this church has seen and the way in which the story has been told throughout the years, the faithfulness of God. The story of this church is a story of God working out part of the divine story of love, <clears throat> compassion, hope, salvation, in and through our shared ministry. Ministry is done. The ministry is not yet even begun. The story of this church, the history of this church, which you and I and all may celebrate, it's a story of God working in and through this place of brick and mortar, of baptisms and marriages and weddings and funerals. This place of worship and of breakfast programs, of mission trips, and of open and affirming welcome. And North Street mission endeavors and of car loans for the impoverished, and of German sister cities. That's the story. Know the story, love the story, celebrate the story. It is a story of God active and working here, through you, through you, through you, and through this community of faith, which has been and is and will continue to be God's voice, speaking a very particular and distinctive message to a community that needs to hear. I gotta tell you, one of the happiest times of this year for me was when I went online and I read in, what's the name of the paper? The Daily Record. I read in the Daily Record about people who were spending the night on the doorsteps. What a message of love it was when your pastor was quoted in an article that was written about wanting to criminalize homelessness, that indeed there is welcome in God's church and compassion for those who are cold and weary. God is good. All the time. Amen. Our story is a story of faith. It is a story of faith which has brought us safe thus far. And it's also a story of faith which will lead us. As we are faithful to God and God is faithful to us in the direction to accomplish the will of God for showing compassion and mercy and love and hope to all of God's people. We love the future. We love the past. And we look to the future through the rearview mirror and know that God is here. And God will be there. And we're invited to be there as well. Thanks be to God.